So, do you like engineering? Do you like woodworking? Or like me, a bit of both? Recently, I got recommended this book and I want to show you guys what's in it. I find these sorts of books fascinating. It's an old Victorian book. I think there's lots in here that you could apply with modern machines like laser cutting to woodworking. Later on in the video, I will be covering laser cutting gears and three easy ways of doing this. And I'll also be showing the party trick that I've got up my sleeve to the automata that I'm going to build. Okay, this is the book. It's 507 Mechanical Movements by Henry T. Brown. Uh, it's quite an old book. This is obviously a reprint. And I obviously am not going to make all 507 mechanisms. I'm cherry picking some of the ones that are best suited to laser cutting. Uh, and the first one being this uh, number eight, which is I can make little pulleys in light burn and I've set this up to have a little variable speed pulley. You could obviously use all, any of these. These are all just general pulleys, crisscross, etc. You can even use these to change direction uh, depending on how you twist those pulleys. There is lots of mechanisms in here. Here's the one that I talked about rotating. I use that technique later in the video. I chose number 27. I felt I could build this up in layers to do it and it's a cam based speed change. So the cams rotate through the other pulley and that then varies the speed because it doesn't, it's not one to one drive the way the cams follow the path. Number 68. Now I've done something similar to this. I personally looked at this and felt that it wasn't quite right for me to make it as it is to index so i've done a, a different version of that you'll get one rotation of a pulley and it will index another pulley in a certain amount depending on what you set up One of the first techniques I started using for creating gears was using light burn. Now this is a relatively simple technique where I import a gear profile. I then replicate that gear profile, edit it to suit my needs. Once I'm happy with the profile of the teeth, I'll then use the circle array tool within light burn to rotate that around the circle to then create gear. The drawback to this technique does mean that you require some mathematical calculations when it comes to the circumference and how many teeth you can fit within that circle. Obviously, if you then need a different gear ratio, you then have to recalculate the circumference to suit the amount of teeth that are required. Once you're happy with the teeth, you then simply merge that into one layer and then you have a gear. I usually then replicate that gear to see if it sits correctly within the teeth and then edit any of the lines that require smoothing out. Ninety. I've created this version. I mean, this this sort of thing would uh, lend itself to a lock or a latch or that sort of thing, where you wanted to lock with a pin going forwards and backwards on a cam. You can see how this mechanism works. It works really well. Uh, so I say you you then apply this to a more complex mechanism if you're making it into a lock 
versus just a, a latch. K130 was a mechanism. This one, one was actually like an automated shear mechanism, which operates on a cam and then operates some scissors. Now I've took that idea and used it to actually operate some small little piston mechanisms. And you can see me assembling them here. So they activate on cams and will go forwards and backwards to, to suit what I require. 152 another one i've taken you may have seen this as a common one these sorts of things is what i'd really want to encourage woodworkers to take on if you're using a woodworking router i feel passionate that you should be trying to apply some of this to woodworking because if you want to make things that are different and more adventurous learning some mechanical skills really helps you apply different techniques like this mechanism where you're you can create ovals fairly easily attaching a router to the end of of this type of mechanism and creating ovals and that is adjustable you can move it on the pin to suit to make different sized ovals depending on what you want whether you want an oval sized top or a foot to a table or anything like that or a mirror lots lots of different applications you could use rather than just making a boring old square mirror second way I create gears is on Fusion 360 under the utilities and add-ons and they have a spur gear generator it's easily modified and you can set the parameters to what you want for gears you can then obviously adjust any parameters within that and edit it afterwards if required changing the whole size and that sort of thing the downside to this technique is that if you don't own the full version you don't have access to export as a uh, DXF file or an SVG file to get the outline of the gears. I'll do a rundown at the end of this to summarise all the pros and cons for gear generating and other options that are available. 166, it's like a big cam with a pin attached it's almost like a piston in that respect it would sort of the your pulley goes round and round and then your pin goes up and down uh, this mechanism is being applied to my build as seen here okay 246 this is a uh, basic pantograph uh, mechanism i've made a basic one i think this is again another mechanism that can be applied to many things within your workshop you could uh, attach that to a pencil a dremel a router lots of little applications like that where you can use it as a tool to copy things either increase the size or even do one-to-one -one. you can adjust it to suit whatever ratio you require for copying something over and that's easily made whether it's with a laser cutter or whether it's made just by hand, cut out the parts and make the pinholes to suit. I have a few mechanisms on this page, 324 and 325. Both, I feel, are the sort that you would want to apply to jigs and that sort of thing within your workshop. One will, Both will act as parallels, so if you move one to the other, they will still stay parallel to each other you could apply these two um, jigs to do with the table saw and all that sort of thing um, or even uh, vice packers
Third option for gear generation is woodgears.ca. They have an online gear generator that is free, but is limited and you can only print off the designs to then make by hand. If you pay a small fee to download the generator, this gives you far more flexibility as to what you can add, whether it's rack and pinion, spur gears, and lots of other options within that parameters. And the last but not least, 505. Uh, last but not least, 505. Uh, this is a again another one where you can change the direction of uh, the gears and speeds by fixing one gear will move another faster or slower depending on which one you fix or not fix. Okay, here we go. These are the pros and cons of the gear making for the different programs. If you're interested, I'd highly recommend that you pause it to take a look. If not, I'd love it if you've got this far to like, subscribe and check out the rest of my content on this channel. great to see you here at the end of the video if you like mechanical mechanisms why don't you check out my height adjustable desk that i built for my workshop as for me i'm off back to the workshop to get on with some sanding you guys still doing here no one wants to see my dad dancing Go on, be off with you